once again, you all know who I am. My name is Andrew Crawley Jr. I am the host here at the Kingdom's Perspective. And you all know I'm always delighted to have back on the show the co-host of the show, Brandon Sweeney, author, excuse me, author Brandon Sweeney. What's going on, Sweeney? Oh, man, good. Just living life, man. Rolling with Jesus, man. So I'm blessed. Rolling with Jesus. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is Jesus enough? He, is he? Huh? He has to be enough. Man, because I'm going to tell you, I, I had to ask some people that the other day, you know, because now you got to jump through so many hoops, you know, man, you say, yeah, you say, well, are you this and are you that, uh, you know, well, who you with? I'm like, I'm, I'm just with Jesus. You're right. It is absolutely crazy that now when you look at it, and this ain't what we're going to talk about today, but, you know, while we're here, we might as well be here. It is absolutely crazy that if y'all, if we really be honest, mm -hmm. in the church world today, Jesus ain't enough. He not. Now, we'll say it, we'll say he's enough. Yeah. But yeah, when it comes to other saints and everything, we make them jump through a whole lot of man-made hoops. Yeah. And then not only that, we gotta you gotta be identified with this sect of this sect right here. Like no, because yeah, you gotta have Jesus right here, and you gotta have every you know everything. Yeah, and then with the denominations and stuff like that. Now we create so many different types of Christians. Yeah. And you know there was a statistic that I heard in a presentation not too long ago that said that now and across the world there's more denominations. Christian denominations than there are pages in the Bible. That don't even make sense. No wonder we can't get all together on anything. Why? Because there's too many other different types of other Christians. <laughs> How you gonna be another type? Of How you gonna be another type of Christian? There's just one type of Christian. There's one Lord Jesus Christ. There's one Father. There's one type of Christian. Jesus Christ. I'm sorry, but if y'all come up to me, I'm gonna let you know Jesus Christ is enough for me. And if you're looking for any other type of answer, I don't have it to give to you. I'm not a part of the denomination. I'm a part of Jesus Christ. What we have, we have done. I mean, Paul wrote letters to the to the church at Corinth, meaning the community of believers at Corinth. Wow, yeah. You know, yeah. but now we got a community with other communities within other communities. Oh, messed up. Yeah. You know, but hey, we're here today and we're excited about it. And what the topic, what we're going to do today during this episode of The Kingdom's Perspective is we're going to go ahead and pick back up on the family structure. So today we are going to be saying this is the family structure part two. You all know if you go back to in our, in our archive of our episodes and whenever you get a chance, go back to our YouTube channel and look at all our episodes. You'll find one of the episodes that we've done some time ago and it was called The Family Structure. And so we kind of, you know, did some generalization, hit on some things dealing with the family structure. And so during this episode, we're going to continue in that vein and we're going to start a series dealing with the family structure, a healthy family life, you know, during this day and during this time. And so when we start off with that, those of you all that are my Facebook friends, y'all know from time to time, uh, some things hit on my heart and I make, you know, some posts of ministry. And so there was a post that I made not too long ago dealing with the family structure and it hit home not only with so many different people, but I even went back and kept ready and ready to get into my spirit over again. Because you all know that uh, you all need to know if you're going to be leaders or anything dealing with, you know, with ministry, you know, you need to understand that ministry is a flow of the Holy Ghost. We are vessels. We are only messengers. Right. And so because that is so, sometimes the Holy Spirit can influence you with things that's not you. And you got to go back and make sure you get it for yourself and everything like that. Why? Because it wasn't you that gave it. You was just a vessel. At times. Right. And so we need to realize that, you know, when you sometimes preachers, you got to go back because it's a flow. Sometimes you know, you felt, you know what it's like to stand before a congregation and to speak and to preach and you have something in mind and then the Holy Spirit takes you somewhere else and he gives you something that you didn't even have within yourself. Mm -hmm. Because this, yeah. this walk is a supernatural walk and we need to understand and, and we need to. Pay respect always to the person of the Holy Ghost. Yes. And so, you know, with that said, but I go back to my Facebook post. There was a Facebook post, you know, that I put out about the family structure. What I want to do is I want to read that because this series of the family structure that we're going to be dealing with, we're just going to pick apart this post that I that I come about. And so if you look or if you may remember that on Facebook, that post read something like this. I put up there, man is the glory of God. Woman is the glory of man. Children should be the glory of the union between man and woman. Because of this, children are, the, are to honor and obey the parents. Woman is to submit to the man and nurture the children. Man is to give identity to the children, 
cover the woman and be ultimately responsible for the entire family. Anything outside of this is dysfunction. This may be culturally abnormal, unaccepted, and hated, but it is the most healthy way. It's reported that 90% of families are dysfunctional. Most of us may have come from something different than this, but let's strive for this model and be better off. Amen. Amen. Sweetie, now for we now, I like to go to you. You know, give me the post you read the post, and I know one of the things that I like about you, which is myself, man, dealing with the family structure. When we talk about family, a heart start beat, yeah. and I know yours do with the experience that you have professionally. Yeah. You know, dealing with families and stuff like that. But man, what's your take on you know the post and what we've talked about so far? Well, man, my, my take on it uh, when I first read it, I was like, man, this is true, right? This mm -hmm. is this is how it should be. This is what it looks like. Um, but then I started thinking about where the family is today mm -hmm. and how do we get off, you know, how right. do we get to where we are now. And so you, when I look back, um, you know, the older generation, yes, sir. they had something that we're missing today. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, the more and more I, when I was dealing with families and even look at my own family, and I, a lot of it stem from my own family, mm -hmm. you know, not having a dad, seeing my mom had to work a lot and, you know, seeing my uh, brothers and sisters, I mean, we had to make do with what we had. Mm -hmm. And... You know, we didn't have uh, certain things, but it was dysfunctional. But not only for my family, but just looking back at my family history, looking right. back on, you know, families all together, marriages and whatnot. Uh -huh. And the thing that they had that wasn't confusing was that they knew their roles, right? They knew their wow. place. That was um, excellent. You know, the woman, the, the wife knew that she was the nurturer of the home, you mm -hmm. know, that she was taking care of the home and, you know, doing whatever she needed to do with the kids. And, you know, the husband was providing and his role was supposed to be there for the kids and give them identity. And so even though we've seen some things that happened back in the day, whether it was in the South or up North, where there was abuse or mother station or right. you know, the man mistreated the woman, they had the structure. Mm -hmm. Even though they may have abused the structure, right. they still had they it. They still had it. Amen. Which is why some marriages still lasted. Because why? Because their mamas taught them, their their mama, their great great grandmama and them taught them, and so it was passed down. And so you get to you know our society today, and if you look at it, man, there's a lot of you know businesses counseling, you know marriage and family counseling, a lot of it because they're trying to tackle this issue we call family, and people are coming up with different. Um, ideas on what it yes. looks like. They're coming up with, yes. you know, maybe you know the man should stay home and just take care of the kids right. while the woman works. Or right. and I'm like, what? You know, and so you know, there's there's something different, and you can even notice this in, in, within a, uh, a husband or a wife. Why? Because God made men to do certain things, right? It's Amen. in them. Amen. It's in them. I think. And even with the woman, they, he made her to do certain things, but because of our upbringing, but because of the abuse, but because of the neglect, but because of the, you know, the things that went on that shouldn't have went on, right. it just started our view of um, really our family, is. of marriage. And so when we got older, mm -hmm. we brought that same image, that same yeah. feeling into our marriage, same vision. That's good. And man, next thing you know, everything is dysfunctional. So you got people, kids saying, I'm not going to be like my mom or my dad. You know, they beat me. I'm not going to, I'm going to, you know, be friends mm -hmm. to my, my kids and I'm not right. going to whip them or, you know, I'm not going to... Um, do what my mom did. She stayed with my, my dad and he disrespected her. But they, they didn't get the heart of what marriage was about a family. And right. so uh, because That's that cool. was so thrown off and because they were so hurt and messed up by it, by the divorce, by the, the cheating and all that, man, they just grew up with their own idea of it. And so now you get to a place where, man, people are just doing whatever they feel good. And, and here's the thing. The, the, the marriage rate has skyrocketed. Um, and we, you know, people get a divorce and families dysfunctional right. and the husband's out of the kingdom. In the kingdom and out of the kingdom. In the kingdom and out of the kingdom, right? right. Because of, we got off, right? Got and, off. And, and I always look at it this, you know, even though some things happened in the past, we should always glean from what they did and, right. and take it, take the good with the bad, apply it, and then move forward. Uh, but we just took the whole thing and say, man, we don't want to do right. it. Instead of, take, instead of just taking the meat and spit out the bones. And spit out the bones. That's what we should have right. done. So you, right. got, so you got, you know, a whole lot of issues going on, man, cheating on a wife, you know, a wife, she don't want to fool it, she feel like I'm too independent, I'm going to work, I'm going to do this. And and I think women do things by default, right, right. because they had to, you know, my mm -hmm. mom worked two, three jobs by default, didn't really want to. My I don't team. think she was really built for it because of the stress, because it took a lot out of her. Um, and then, you know, men doing things by default, um, well, oh, man, I got to take care of the kids and go to work, I got to, you know what I mean? And so right. it, it's a lot of stress, it's a lot of pressure, and then not only that, doesn't make anything better. Why? Because new ways, information, technology, everything is moving fast paced. Mm -hmm. There's no family sitting down time where you can yeah. eat together. We talk don't to touch it. on that. None of that. So, so I think when I look at the post, 
and I said a lot. But when I look at the post, man, I think about all that and how that the post that you put up has gotten off. And people don't want to embrace that. They don't want to. Because they feel like, man, no, because they feel entitled. I got a right because you don't know what I've been through. Right. And you know what? And it's and like you said, now we come up with our own ideology of what family is. And and most of that is well out of abuse that we've seen. And a lot of that is well out. Well, I know whatever happened, whatever I'm going to do, I'm going to make sure I don't do what what the, the, right. what was destruction about, you know, the abuse or whatever. Extreme. Because just because... You was abused in a certain thing, you know what I'm saying? Don't give you, you don't just throw everything away. And and that, now we're Christians, and we're this is a Christian show. We're coming at this from a Christian point of view. Guess what? The good advantage that we have is we can go to the Word for the identity of the family. Exactly. That's what we can do. And when and actually, you know, going back to that post, Sweeney, and I actually I wasn't reading, I wasn't in prayer, but actually when I, that it dropped in my spirit, I was actually out in the middle of the edge, just dropping. I just got to typing. But I do know it was well out of this out of the scripture that I want to mm -hmm. read, um, which it, the, the beginning of it, and it all just kind of spawned from there. If you go to First Corinthians, and uh, it was in the eleventh um, chapter, and it's uh, verse seven, and verse seven, we're probably gonna read verse seven and verse ten, and it reads in the King James version: "For a man indeed ought not to cover his head, for as much as he is the image and glory of God." But the woman is the glory of man. For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. For this cause ought the woman to have power over her head because of the angels. Now, when we look at that reading, actually, when you look at the premise, when you look at the context of that whole thing, one of the things that the scriptures was really trying to do was trying to let us know, and because again, we're going to go through, we're going to deal with our, every aspect of this family structure that God allows. And so first thing we need to deal with is the basis of it. The basis of a family is the marriage, the union between the man and the woman. Now the basis of a marriage is the man. Is the man. You know, the basis of that man should be God. You know, so but when we look at this scripture and when we look at, you know, even how it reads, the premise of this now, a lot of times when we read it and we don't really study the context, at, at first glance when we read this, a lot of times we try to preach against it because we think well, we don't have to do that now because we think that this is really talking about a physical covering. When you go to church and when you pray, you got to put a physical covering on it and if not, you know, you're out of the will of God. If you pay a close attention to that scripture, to that to that context, you will find that what the Lord was trying to signal to us, he was trying to signal to us a spiritual parallel. Because if you look in that, he's, he's talking about the physical covering, but he's trying to give you a spiritual parallel of that covering and let you know who should and shouldn't be covered. Right. If you want to know about these spiritual covers and stuff that we've been having going on, Ooh, and who should, who should and shouldn't be covered, the only people who are supposed to have a covering is married women and children, not a man. You might not like it, but if you're not like it, you got to rip that page out of your Bible. Because if you look at it, or if you read the whole chapter that we just talked, it talks about that. And that's really what it's talking about. These coverings, one of the reasons why the family is off is because what the family comes to to be redeemed, which is ministry, is off. And so what ministry have done in a lot of cases and in a lot of our organizations, we try to cover men. The Bible lets us know you dis a man is disgraceful if he has a covering over his head. And that is just not talking about a physical covering. It's talking about a spiritual covering. And so, but when you look at it, Sweeney, when you really try to make sense of it, it really don't make sense. So now, because when you really look at it, who's more of the married woman covering, her husband or her pastor? Mm. Ain't that a good question? That's a good question. And so now look at what's been going on in the church, Sweeney. Now you have women that is more loyal and show more respect to their pastors than their husbands at home. Oh, talk about it, because I've seen, yeah. Huh? <laughs> huh? We're we going to deal with it, yeah, because it, yeah. where we have gone, and again, listen to our hearts to this show. We'll point stuff out so that we can be liberated from, from what man have put on top of the scriptures and has gotten us off. We're not pointing the finger, but we are combating an unseen reality. We all have been duped by what we've always known, but now that we are liberated and God is liberating some, we're trying to liberate others because there is a more healthy way. The whole gist of this thing is to be more healthy. God set about a healthy way. And what is unhealthy is what we've been doing in the church when men covering other men. And so now, who's the final authority over in the home? So now the woman has three options to pick from. She got to pick from Jesus, her husband, and the pastor. <laughs> but what Christian women need to realize 
is you prove God by how loyal you are to your husband. You're right, not to your pastor. Not to your pastor. Or any other man. <laughs> or any other man. And it, it, it's tight, but it's right because we have to understand the importance and the dynamic of the family structure and we're dealing with the basis right now, the union between the woman and the man. And even if your husband not saved. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> see, that's why you're the co-host. Go ahead on and deal with that. Go ahead on and deal with that. I just want to say that because some women may think, well, he's not a believer, so that don't, you know that gives them the right to go to their pastor, have their pastor cover them. Right. Why? Because they feel like he's rightly related to God and they think they need to get this special blessing. and all. Right. Listen, you married your husband, whether he's saved or not, and the Bible talks about that too. And the Bible talks whether about Whether he's saved that. or not, He's your covenant. He is your covenant. He's your covenant. Now, of course, you can do some things by praying and, and seeking God in, in the way you live your life, and maybe you may win him over to Christ. Amen. At the end of the day, he's your husband. And God doesn't go against with the structure that he already put in place. Amen. The structure that Say he that already again, put in place. So bro. the way that things are set up, man, people feel like they can make it. And that's, you know, we get into our feelings. And, well, that's not that's not right. He just He's a drunk. He's, he's crack. He's this and that, this and that. But you dishonor God. More when you try to dishonor your husband and go find somebody else, you you can in a sense be committing spiritual adultery. Lord, how mercy! That's, That's why he the co-host, man. <laughs> that must be another book coming out. Because <laughs> when you look at it, and, and y'all think about this, and I know some of y'all have dealt with this person, or you've seen, or you know somebody who's dealing with this. Even if your husband is unsaved, guess what? You don't help the situation because you're making the church being more loyal to the church than to the house. Because guess what? Now you make the church his enemy. The church is getting all of his time. That he, his woman is more spending more time in the church than at home. So, so why would he come to a Jesus that's taking his wife from him? Exactly. Exactly. And because like the scriptures say now, like it or not, because the scriptures say you were made for him. He wasn't made for you. Mm -hmm. And if you were made for him, you ask God to anoint you to, 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 to be for him. Even if he saved. Because guess what? You, if you prove the consistency of God, you might bring him around because the scriptures does let us know that an un, that a, that a unsaved spouse that's willing to stay with the saved spouse can be justified through that saved spouse. There could be a point of that. So look, keep doing what you're supposed to be doing, but we have to stop this false stuff that's going around in the church because it's doing more busting families up than helping families. And that is this covering thing when a woman's supposed to be covered, you know, by somebody that's the only way a woman, you know, and a lot of times, we, we think this is chauvinistic. It is not. God proved that he loved his precious women so much that he never wanted them to be uncovered for the rest of their life. Mm -hmm. And Sweeney, what we don't realize, that's what the wedding ceremony is all about. Mm -hmm. It's crazy how we in America, mm -hmm. we do stuff and we think it's just cute. You know, and we walk up there and who gives this woman to be married to this man? I do. And then you sit down. And now we get so contemporary with it that the man and the woman want to set up and say, we do. No. <laughs> if you look at the whole the wedding ceremony <laughs> means something. And what that means is, is that first of all, we have to understand that daughters are the property on, of their fathers. Exactly. Now, I know y'all might want to, you probably want to throw rocks at the TV. You probably want to do whatever. But I let God be true and every man be a liar. If you look at culturally and where everything that we do came out of, go back and look at the meaning of that. If you are a daughter, you are owned by your father. You are your daddy's property. And he changed, and it was it was such a tradition back then that you you basically exchanged covers. Right, your your father yeah, exactly. was releasing his cover, his right. That's what the wedding over ceremony to, is for. Yeah, right, exactly. All the wedding ceremony is is a transaction of coverings. Exactly. Lord have mercy. Exactly. That's all it is. Because what happens is, and that's why, and I don't get this, uh, young brothers. Let me tell y'all something. I know y'all may call it old fashioned or whatever, but that stuff is for the birds. Don't ever marry a woman without going to her father and asking permission and going to her parents exactly. and asking for permission. That's that's the utmost disrespect and it is out of order. If you marry a woman, you go because, see, you don't even understand coverings and submission and all that. She submit to your covering, but guess what? You can't, because what a lot of y'all have done, a lot of y'all have robbed coverings. So now you stole her. Whenever you don't ask her father permission to marry her, you, you are a thief because you robbed coverings. Wow. You went in his store and you took something that didn't belong to you. And then you'll find, you find yourself fighting against that man for, for 
Yeah, for most of my when, 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 when you fight with somebody come in and stole something that belonged to you. Yeah. And listen to what we're saying. Look, for y'all that may have done it, of course, that's grace. Most people have done it because we're so contemporary. And, and know out it. of ignorance, right? You know, out of yeah. a lot of things we do now is out of ignorance. But the reason for this show is to show the model, and so we have something to strive to get back to. You may have made the mistake, ran off in the low, but guess what? Your children don't have to do it because now we're finding out the better way, and, and we and we want to do it. But that's what the wedding ceremony is all about. God loved his daughter so much, he never saw his women uncovered. And so because of that, that's what the wedding ceremony is all about. So when the man walks his daughter down the aisle, what he's doing is he's bringing his property to the, to the next one who he's going to release it to. And that's where, and really when you really get technical and when you, when you get into the, um, you know, what, what the foreign people do when they give you goats and the animals and everything, the diaries and all that, because guess what? That was a transaction of what they was to receive. Right. We don't even understand that all this stuff means something. We want to just get in our tucks and get cute and have our friends and family. We don't yeah. know that all this stuff really means something. But, but it's really there for our safety and for us to be more healthy. And so that's what it's about. Women are only covered by their husbands. Unless, unless if your husband is even unsaved, he is still your covering. But you show God, you prove God by how devoted that you are to him. And even vice versa. And if you're not married, then you, your father. And if you're not married, your father is your covering. If he, he is if dead, dead guess what? <laughs> Christ is your covering. That's the good thing. That's why I don't know why anybody wants to say it. Especially yeah. women because you're always covered. You're always There's a covered. reason why he always wanted you covered. because that's And it ties to why the scriptures say you are the weaker vessel. This is not chauvinistic. This is not demoting women. God love women. Women are important. The women that's in my life are important. My grandmother, oh my God, she oh she showed Christ like nobody I've ever seen that I know personally in the family structure. You know, as a matter of fact, my grandmother to prove our point, what we just talking about in scripture. My grandmother was saved decades before my grandfather. My grandmother, my grandfather was a drunk. He beat her clothes off. He shot at her kids. But you know what? She, my grandmother was saved and she remained faithful. She didn't even run his name in the mud. Hello. Oh, man. She never bucked him and she served him like a king every day of his life. Then guess what? One day my granddaddy got saved and it had a lot to do with the consistency. He knew he had to know that there was a God somewhere that empowered this woman to act consistent to, wow. towards him even though the way that he treated her. And guess what? My granddaddy ended up saved and the whole neighborhood, if you go back to that town, all of their kids, they had 10, five boys and five girls and raised 13 in one house. Then all of the kids will tell you there was a notable difference in the day that my granddad received Christ. He was a totally different man. Wow. So women, you are important. There is a power that God has equipped you with, but you, you got to operate your power in the parameters which he's given you. That is submission to, and to your covering, which is not your pastor, but your husband. Not only that, you men, don't you dare go open the car door for your first lady and help your first lady up the steps and you ain't open the car door for your wife at home Hello. in a month. <laughs> this stuff has got to stop because you want to look, oh, give me. honor. Yeah. Yeah. What we're saying, we're not saying don't honor the leaders that's in the church, but we're saying take care of home put first. everything, <laughs> take care of home first. Take care of home first. Man. What you think, sweetie? Well, I, well, I want to piggyback off of what you said about the weaker vessel, man, and it goes back to what I said earlier about you know, women, um, certain things that they're built for, right. and certain things that they're not built for. Right. You know, there's and God created like that, and I, and I think that's the balance because two, they both need each other. There's certain they things both, that men can do that women want, you know, that really can't do. And if they try to do it, you know, you see a lot of powerful women, right, mm -hmm. um, who who are successful. Don't take anything wrong for me. Not intimidated by it. We love it. But when they when they can't go home and be the wife that they want to. Right. To their husband, I think that there's something wrong with it, yeah. and, and, and it takes a lot out of them to do what they're doing. You're right, and, and it's like if you're going to be the most dominant one, then it's like the husband takes the back seat. And most of the women that you see who are powerful, while they're strong, their husband's in the in, is in the back seat. Right? And so, and it might not be for everybody; it might be a, a balance. Um, but for the most part, for what I've saw, mm -hmm. the husband's in the back seat chilling. Now, a woman who's like, "Well, that's right. Why can't he be, you know, supportive of her to do all that?" They're missing the point. Right. Why? Because it takes a lot out of the woman, right? Mm -hmm. You going out trying to be, you know, uh, the provider, trying to be a protector, trying to be the when you trying to do everything, you know, that that you're not supposed to, you wear yourself out, right? And you see, and you see stress. You see women built for that because they're trying to, um, you know, continually fight for the rights. And not not saying that you don't need the rights. I mean, there's some things that you know we did do that wasn't right. But right. there's there's a limit to that, right? right? Because you take away the balance, mm -hmm. right? And so when you when you 
when you feel like, oh, I'm not the weaker vessel. The man. No, no, no. It, it, it's a good thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, you so it's a good thing. Yeah, it's not a bad thing. It's not saying that you weak. You can't do anything. No, right. no. And it's not saying that you got to be this old, you know, I'm an independent woman and the diva and all that. No, no. It means that, listen, there's some things you can, you do well that you need it, but you need to cover. Why? Because there's some things that God gave the man to do. Right. And, and if he don't do his job or he keep it from doing his job, then all hell can break loose. Right? Yeah. Uh, and and we're going to let it And we're right. seeing it. And we're seeing it before so, so our very eyes. A combination and it's a balance. The two go together. Amen. They go, they go together. I mean, you have to balance that out and work together because if not, man, you, and I see it, man. And, and you know, I didn't have a, a marriage to look at growing up, mm -hmm. but when I got saved and got into the church, I saw a lot of marriages, man. And I saw, you know, women who, you know, would use their, you know, their, 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 their um, sexuality, mm -hmm. you know, to, for, I guess their husbands, you know, right. they, they were mad at them and they did these things. They need that. Like women are smart. And they know what they have, they know what they possess, and they know how to get another man. And they know they got the power. Right. Oh, they got the power. They got the power. They got the power. They got the power. Sure, brother. There's, yes, sir. There's some things that she yes, can say sir. to a man that, uh, uh, Crawler, you said to me probably wouldn't matter, but when my wife said something to me that yeah. cut me deep. Absolutely. You know, and, and vice versa. I mean, we vice see the men, you know, who are, you know, abusive, who do things crazy, and you're just like, man, what's the balance? And then I seen, you know, couples who, who had this flow, and I'm like, wow, that's what I want. Because it was a balance. It wasn't, you know, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. It was, man, the wife knew to stay in her lane, husband stayed in his lane, but right. they worked out together. Yeah. And I think that's where, again, you go back and see some of the older generation, they had it, uh, where, you know, the woman did this, the, you know, the man did that. Now, the thing that I was, you know, a little disappointed of when I see kids now today who said, oh yeah, my, my, my grandma, my mom, and it was like that, I saw that. Mm -hmm. But the thing that threw them off because they didn't understand the meaning of what the mom, how the mom was serving her husband, how she would prepare meals and she right. would do this and her husband would go work and they had this and, and and they felt like, man, why she doing all that? Why mm -hmm. she not out? She could have went to school, she could have did you know what I mean? And yeah. it's like, yes, but sir. you didn't get the meaning right. of what marriage was. And it was first. Right. And it was the most important because it, it you know, everything else came out of that. But you know, yeah. so I wanted to say that. But, that's that's good, man. And I mean, to stay in that same flow, Sweeney, so what we're gonna do. And we don't know how many episodes we're gonna we're gonna spend on it, but what we're gonna do, we're gonna dissect this and that post and everything. So the first part of the post we're gonna deal with is the man. And so what we wanna do, we wanna deal um with the man and, and so you know the man is the glory of God. 